technical utility of, of some of the clubs is quite different from that of others. But uh, as Mark Emery and David Melvin and, and to a sense, Free Rob Cannabis, that's from England, he actually changed his name to Free Rob Cannabis. Um, he's quite a dude. He did all sorts of stuff um, a few years ago in particular. But uh, many people in the movement believe that you know the more that is being sold and grown, uh, the, the you know the, the overgrow the government theory is is that you know that will overwhelm them. Well, some of us don't exactly buy that. You know, the more cannabis culture we have, certainly the better. But you know, and, and the plant needs to be grown, or we're not smoking anything. But uh, you know, there are many ways to be active and many focuses to take. And sometimes, I think some of the aggressive growing and selling uh, of the herb and, and even smoking. Uh, can you know cause serious backlash in the community? You know that's coming from someone who's been arrested sharing joints and passing out cookies. So, you know, uh, I, I've learned to a point from my own experiences, though I, I still will, uh, you know, break some of those laws a little occasionally to be sure. Um, but uh, you know how flagrant I, I go about these things has certainly changed over time, and I don't think it's been nearly as open as you know going to police stations like throughout Canada. So. Mark Emery did a summer of legalization tour, you know, pulling out beautiful bombs in front of police stations in every province in the country. And, um, you know, to a point, it was very successful, you know, legally and, 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 and uh, um, uh, maybe personally. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, um, it didn't change any, any laws and uh, it did, uh, you know, make him appear, in, I, I would have to say in some cases, to be uh, you know, really aggressive. And unfortunately, uh, you know, I think we need to be uh, very sensitive of that. If we want people to tolerate us, we have to, uh, you know, be respectful of them and not kind of get in their face either. So, um, so uh, yeah, like I say, uh, California's had uh, lots of problems with uh, the police and protests against the DEA and stuff. Um, Mark Emery certainly has uh, gotten himself and his fair share of water. This is a protest in the park kind of across the street from where uh, the uh, cannabis culture shop is. Uh, now it was, this, this occurred I guess after the, uh, uh, he, he was arrested <coughs> in Nova Scotia. He wasn't actually arrested here. Um, but, uh, um, you know, rallies are definitely uh, one way to uh, um, uh, draw attention. There's been many rallies uh, around the world, uh, some more successful than, than others, um, but uh, you know they, they can be you know very useful to you know spread information and, and inspire people and, and help people connect with each other and and get out in, into the media. Almost any chance we have of getting into the media is, is, is important. Um, so I've got a few minutes, so I'm going to have to flash through some of these last pictures here. So uh, one of the things that I like to do is to try to have a little bit of fun with uh, my activism. I really enjoy seeing other people having fun. I think the more fun you have, you know, the, the more impact you can have. That, you know, I've often said if I, I, I can't persuade people, at least I'll entertain them, right? Um, so you know, things like comic books and, 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 and stuff like that um, can have you know, ways of bringing up the conversation and, and having fun. And people listen to, to humor, they don't listen to ranting. And so, you know, the more humor and fun you're able to have, and, and, and the more friendly you are, I think the more accepted we are. And that's, that's one of the, 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 the ways of, of activism that I like. One of the newer things that's occurred, that's available to people now too, is, is the internet. It, it allows you to be uh, anonymous, so you can uh, do and say all sorts of things on the internet, and, and no one uh, knows who you are. I thought uh, uh, Tank Bagman was uh, a really good example of uh, how you know a person can be you know out there and, and doing stuff, informing people, and and and, and inspiring uh, about different things, uh, but not having to uh, you know risk uh, your your neighbors or, or or others you know knowing uh, who you are and what you do. So. You know, thank goodness for the internet. Because on the other hand, too, there's all sorts of very ill people that can't get out there. They live in isolated communities that otherwise would not get like the newspapers or or any real information. So the internet suddenly, within I would even say the last five years in particular, 
has just exploded and allowed many of us to have connections with each other um, uh, instantly. That, that's just phenomenal. Like I sit all day uh, with my forums on, you know, uh, at my, my store. And so I, I'm constantly getting updated information from other people and, 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 you know, messages can be sent back and forth. And, you know, that, that kind of live interaction with the cannabis community and constant updates is it's just never been there before. And so, you know, it's, it's really exciting to, uh, to, to see what's out there. Um, and there's more and more things happening too. Uh, I, I, you know, I talked to a guy earlier, he was actually in Calgary's first ever cannabis cup. Like who could have imagined Calgary being bold enough and to have a successful cannabis cup? Well, maybe some of you, but uh, certainly, uh, you know, it, it's exciting to me to, to have, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, through the internet, you know, uh, awareness of, of all the people that are, are getting out, uh, in some cases, in, in some of the darkest places in the country, and, uh, you know, my hat's off, go to them. Um, certainly, there's no uh, worse country to get out of the closet in than the United States. Um, the Seattle Hemp Fest is certainly the largest, uh, you know, celebration or, or you know, uh, activist uh, uh, networking opportunity in, in the world. Uh, every August, I think like the third week of August, they average 100,000 people. Um, it's quite something, apparently. Uh, obviously, I'll never be allowed down there alive. <laughs> so uh, maybe one day I'll, I'll get them to spread some of my ashes down there. But uh, certainly it, it's very inspiring to know that, that in you know the United States, kind of as far as the world goes, one of the, the worst places uh, uh, to, to be open about this plant. You know, there, there is still a, a great resistance to the law and, and, and many people willing to, to step out against it. And uh, thank goodness for that. Um, there's many groups and people I didn't get to mention here. Not all activists are successful and uh, certainly uh, um, many have lost their lives. I don't know their names, but there's two uh, uh, from Michigan. I think it was, was it two years ago they were killed? No, 2001. Week oh, it was 2001. Uh, okay. A week before 9 11, Washington. Uh, days before. Yeah, there was. Uh, the Rainbow um, Farm? The, the Rainbow Farm murder in, in Michigan. That's why, so many, any, yeah. that's why they didn't get any um, publicity on the news, is because so much was going on with 9 11. That uh, was after 9 11, yeah. Also, it through about it and everything. It was a few days and then that happened, so it kind of. Yeah, but yeah, there, there's, uh, yeah there, there's a couple activists killed on a farm and they had an annual celebration. Almost like a winter type uh, incident. Where they were holding a peace rally, and uh, they came the DA in there and brought helicopters in and SWAT teams, and and so they they're allowed to have guns in Michigan, right? Like as part of their plot, they're on a farm, and they were shooting guns. Well, that was the excuse that they had to shoot them was because they were armed. Um, I guess uh, you know there's there's many groups and individuals I, I certainly didn't get to mention here. Um, the last one that I might just uh, you know throw a, a note of mention about that don't come up in another class is the Church of the Universe, though uh, primarily a religious organization. I would have to say that uh, they are, are very much a, a political activist network that are uh, you know, very outspoken, and, and many individuals uh, who uh, profess to be of the Church of the Universe have been arrested, uh, engaged in a whole bunch of different uh, activities. Uh, um, some of them uh, are certainly uh, in jail right now. Although, uh, there's several others are on bail, I think, are they in Ontario? Um, but uh, the Holy Smoke, yeah. Um, yeah, again, there's many other activists that I didn't get to mention. Uh, Tommy Chong is finally uh, seemingly turning the corner, being more outspoken. I could go on, but uh, I guess that'll take next year. So thanks, everybody, for coming out. I'm not sure what next week's lecture is about, but... Uh, We'll be here. So, have a great day, everybody.